Okay, this is part two of the Captain's Authority discussion. And we're going to slide into this discussion about software. And so with the software, this is a hard one um, to convey. It's hard for management to convey this because they have this duty. They have this duty to continually improve the airline. And part of continuous improvement means that you have to use new tools. And part of those new tools is software. And I think a lot of pilots look at this as almost like a punch to the gut feeling sometimes because the software is going to take away some things. Uh, but to be honest with you, the things that takes away, I'm like, who cares? Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be in charge of the boarding process or, or make those kinds of decisions on, you know, whatever the software is like changing cost index or climbing to a different altitude or blah, blah, blah. Those are a lot of these things. The software is going to be able to do better than we can do. So the first thing that we need to do is it's hard for, for management to really come out with an email that says, Hey, software's good. <laughs> because we're all like, eh, I don't know, you know, is there a, is there an underlying motion to all of this? Is, is it really good? Or is it just, you know, this is their airline and we work here. Honestly, that's how we feel. And so a lot of times if you get a, a management guy and I'm not a management guy, I'm a line guy, but if you get a management guy that sits down and says, look, it's, it's not about this. It's not about us versus them or us versus you or us trying to do something different. It's about um, improving. And so when if you can get somebody, if you're fortunate, you know, maybe have dinner or a, a separate side conversation without an interruption, you'll figure this out. And and I, I had the good opportunity to do it. So this I'm trying to share this with you. It's not their intention to remove but even when you send out an email or you put out even a, you could even put out an audio message or, or whatever, it's not going to come across like sincerely like it is a face-to-face -face conversation. So it's, this is a hard, we, as pilots, we need to kind of understand, we kind of got to get over this fact of so-and-so's out to get me or the company has his ulterior motives. They don't. It's hard to convey, and that's the point about software. It's just like going to be hard for me to explain this to you. So it leads into culture, and 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 you probably think, what are you talking about? Um, culture, you know, when you take away some of these things, um, whenever you take away from one thing that you have to do, it allows you to do another thing. And so that other thing, let, let's say, I, I know an example is a lot of guys are like, had this death grip on boarding. I decide when we board. <clears throat> okay, if that's, what, if, that's, if that's your jam, great. First thing I always did was delegate that to the in-flight crew, the flight attendant crews, and tell them, listen, this is your area. You're way better at it than me. And so take care of it. If you need something, let me know. But what I'm saying is, if you let the software decide the best way to do it, and, and all airlines are different, they, they figure out how to board, change the boarding, um, who boards first, who boards last, when to do the wheelchairs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when you take that away from the captain, you allow that something else to take its place. And, that, and if you're smart, that something else can really, really help you to grow, but it also can help the airline. For example, back to the boarding thing. If you're not all involved in that and you're smart and you delegate the button pushing stuff to your first officer, what does that leave you to do? You can interact with your customers. You can stand at the door because you look good, right? You stand at the door, 
you can talk to people, you can get a feel for what's going on in the back, and not to mention, you can talk to your crews. I love doing this, um, and it always gets the weirdest response. Uh, if I stand in the doorway, like the doorway to the cockpit, and I'm talking to people as they go by, and I'm trying to talk to the flight attendants, they're like, some of them, what are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> Why are you talking to me? I'm not used to this. And I'm like, we should be used to this because this is part of our culture is if we're trying to work together and deliver this cohesive product and that person's a stranger and they probably are, but you can take a couple minutes and kind of just build this rapport. That's culture. That shapes the company. It also does something else for you. It gives you, when passengers are coming on and and you're, you're like, hi, good morning, or good evening, or whatever, and you're talking to them, they're like, whoa, this is, that, that's the guy. That's the captain. He sees me seeing him. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, people are kind of blown away that you will take that time out of your schedule or that you're, you're not inaccessible or you're not super too busy for them. That is a huge push for culture, not your culture, the culture of the airline, right? You're wearing the uniform. You're the guy showing up representing the company. You want people, obviously, you want people to fly on your airline. Why? Because that pays, that pays your check. That makes your money. And so you are, this is allowing you to do a better job with that. Now you might think, well, that's not my job. Well, I would, I would ask you to reconsider that. It is part of your job. And we're going to get to that in the next little section here, the next part of influence. But moving down, I think you get the point. Moving around, I, you know, where it says non-punitive in this graphic, there's this thing about what the other part that that management is having a hard time conveying is like, look, if you don't want to use the software, no problem. There's no foul. There's no arguing. There's no, nobody's going to say, you know, you're a bad, you, you're, you're not good at your job or you didn't take advantage of the resource. None of that is going on. The software it is good for the company. For example, Single engine taxi. Some of your airlines do it, some don't. That's fine. No one's going to come up to you and say, you had the opportunity to do single engine taxi. Why didn't you do it? There's no harm. There's no foul. Hey, if you saved 50 pounds of gas, 100 pounds of gas, that's great. And you, you probably won't get the pat on the back either for that. But that's for you. And that leads me to this next section, the growth. You know, as pilots, I don't know about you, but I'm rather tired. I'm rather tired of doing V1 cuts and training every year, right? Like, okay, I got this. I know how much, I know how to lock my knee. You know, it sucks. It's a little, you know, a little squirrely because we don't do much, but I'm not getting better by doing one or two a year in training in this controlled environment, I'm not getting better at that. But I can get better at influence. I can get better at my culture. I can get better as a leader. And I can also get better, like let's say, maybe you're like me or I know some guys that take this like way off, way off the scale. They like to compete with themselves. Like I saved, I saved 100 pounds of gas or I saved 300 pounds or I, you know, I shaved off my time, whatever works for you. If you're into all of that, you know, I shaved off my time. Now that's not like flying Mach 80 on the way home, on the go home leg. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I'm just saying to you, as a pilot, we all have this little gene inside of us 
that has this continuous improvement. We want to improve ourselves, our skills, right? If you're a captain, you made it all the way to the top. You got your ATP, you got thousands and tens of thousands of hours, you got an X amount of type ratings, and unless you're gonna go into management or something like that, there's not a whole lot left to accomplish. So there's this, still this little part of our drive, our internally, that's like, hey, I wanna grow. I wanna somehow improve my skill set that could be either my my social interaction or my flying skills or you switch to a different airplane uh, what it, you fill in the blank for whatever works for you but we have that inside of us so when you take that idea and you go okay software act is going to help me do that then it allows me to go to this next section in order for this software to do a good job. I mean, the software, uh, there's a phrase out there, garbage in, garbage out, right? So the software can only do so much with the data that it has. So if you're putting, if you're submitting data, you're submitting data that helps this software grow. You know, AI is not magical. Oh, it kind of is a little bit. But data you know garbage in garbage out so let's say you're at a certain airport and you're like you know what i noticed something every time we go to take off i'm you know we never we never get priority out of this airport you know the airport right we never get prior we always got to wait for like three or four cessnas and you know for the for the sun to shine at just the right angle and for all this whatever that's data that you can tell a company that and they'll be like, oh, that's really good to know. You can also send in data, you know, I know that you guys like to dispatch us under, uh, under whatever the exemptions are because the visibility isn't that great. But this airport geographically, it just sucks. The wet, you can call this, you can call a forecast whatever, but it is always going to be below minimums at this time of year because of where it sits. Or when you're shooting the approach and you know at this spot, because there's a big valley, I get a little dippy dip, right? These are data points. And it's not just this. I gave you three very loose. It could be like, you know, the people in, I don't know, LaGuardia take forever to board versus the people in, you know, Richmond or what. I'm just making this up. These are it sounds stupid, but it's not. It's These are little things that the company can use, and it's like, who's going to give it to them? It's not going to be, I mean, in-flight might do it for you. They might, but it's not going to, it's you. It's You're the man or the woman, and that's important. And that's how software is going to innovate because the next batch of software, version 2.1, is going to have a little bit more information and it's going to have a little bit more uh, improvement to it. And, you're, and, and if you look at it like, oh, it's taking more and more away from me. It's not. You're putting more and more into it. So that's the software portion. So I also wanted to bring up something that I that I noticed when I shot the first video is I, I'm, I'm referring to um, captains as men, I think. And, uh, and I just wanted to say, listen, this, that, that's just a bad habit. It's got, there's no play on, there's lots of female um, captains out there. And of course we're in this diversity realm and that's not my intention when I'm shooting these videos. I'm just trying to give it to you from my point of view. My my brain goes, man, and um, and I'm not trying to cut anybody else out. But if you like this video and you, and you're like, okay, I think I think I'm starting to see where we're going here. The next one or the next section on uh, the, this paradigm shift of where your authority is really going is going to be a great learning tool. So thanks for watching. I hope that helps. If you have a question, send it to me. And uh, it's supposed to be a discussion. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to 
to we're all supposed to kind of grow and change out of this thing influence one another mentor one another and that's the goal that's part of culture um send it out love to hear from you